You're watching Exit 1055 with your host, Richard Rose. Hey, good morning. I'm Richard Rose. Welcome to Exit 1055 Long Island. This is your TV 1055 show about all things Long Island. This morning, how Long Islanders who helped us go to the moon nearly 50 years ago will be honored. Also, we'll have some tips on avoiding unanticipated but common injuries that occur while decorating your home for the holidays. And the sweet story of a Christmas dream come true for a Long Island boy dealing with autism. But we begin this morning with the all-out effort to expand the precious Pine Barrens region on Long Island. It's been set aside to protect Long Island's underground aquifers that are our only source of drinking water. You may remember the battle last year over a proposal to place a solar farm right next to the long-abandoned Shoreham nuclear power plant that also happens to sit next to the protected Pine Barrens region, the plan divided residents and even some environmentalists because it would have required cutting down trees to put up that solar array. Ultimately, the Long Island Power Authority or LIPA decided not to back the plan and it was scrapped. But now several environmental groups want that section and another large parcel added to the Pine Barrens, that to prevent it from ever being developed, whether for solar or for anything for that matter. Joining us now is Richard Amper. He is the executive director of the Long Island, Long Island Pine Barrens Society, which backs expanding the Pine Barrens region. And welcome to the show, sir. Good to be here. Now, this plan has already been passed by the state legislature. By a lopsided margin. Yeah, it didn't get a whole lot of publicity. Explain the measure. Well, the measure would add 1,000 acres, some in Shoreham, some in Mastic, to the Pine Barrens Preserve. The Pine Barrens sits atop our purest drinking water supply, boasts the greatest diversity of plant and animal species, and as you know, we've got water quality problems looming, uh, you know, all these problems that we're getting with nitrogen from wastewater and things that are contaminating the water. So we need to keep open spaces where that water can recharge the aquifer with pure fresh water, the purest water, I must tell you, in the state of New York. Uh, yeah, it just came out that about 20% of the water authorities' uh, report came out indicating that about a fifth of all of our water authorities are dealing with these very contaminated water issues that you mentioned. Development of all kinds compromises water quality. That's why Long Island's facing the problem we're facing. The governor is working uh, actively to try to improve water quality. His signing of this bill will be a big help. Well, you, you presume the signing. Let's talk about that. Where does the proposed law stand now? It's up with the governor? That's right. Once the assembly and the Senate provided the support for it, now it's passed. Now he gets to decide whether to... Sign the bill, make it law, add to the, uh, well, add to the Pine Barrens Act that his father uh, introduced back in 1993 right. and celebrated. Kind and of a family legacy for them. Well, it really is. So that's a big decision, and now the clock is ticking, though, right? Explain right, he's that. Got, sometime in December, he's going to make this decision. It's an important decision for Long Island's water quality and our quality of life and our capacity to control overdevelopment. Yeah, I spoke with the governor's office, and their press spokesman told me it's under review by their council right now, and it's yet to actually be presented to the governor for his consideration. Have you been told whether or not it'll be signed? Nope. The answer is they always say it's under consideration. That doesn't tell us one way or the other which way he's leaning, but I think we need to resolve this whole battle that you alluded to about whether we cut down forests for solar. We think we need both. We think solar should be built on rooftops and parking lots and land that's been previously cleared and the town of Brookhaven has proposed the portion of a closed landfill and people around the country are doing that they're putting the solar there because that's about all you can put on a landfill but that's sort of where it belongs then we can keep our forests intact. Well we'll talk about that a little bit more about this um, this debate that even has entangled <laughs> some environmentalists who are usually on the same side on these issues but well, that's a difference I, I of no, opinion. We have very very few people who are single-mindedly focused on solar if we do this bill, we get both solar and preserved land. Why would we trade one for another? It's a false choice. All right, before we get into that, because I want to talk about that some more, um, till the end of the month, if the governor doesn't do anything, does it automatically become law? Isn't that the way no, it works? They, no, they've work? eliminated all those automatic things. He's got to say yes or no. And, I, you know, he's become increasingly supportive of water protection on Long Island. We're optimistic because of that alone. Well, for folks who may not understand, Pine Barrens, you know, it's a lot of trees and, there are, you know, pine trees. How does setting aside all these thousands of acres, as have been done in the past, uh, protect our groundwater? Well, we've got the public having put up a billion dollars to preserve about 100,000 acres of Pine Barrens, which once covered a quarter of Long Island. When the rain falls, it goes directly into the aquifer. It doesn't pick up the contaminants 
all of the contaminants of the water that we're facing now are because of human activity on the, the surface, whether it's your household waste or whether it's the dry cleaner or the gas station. If you have an area set aside for the recharge of water directly from the rainfall into our sole source aquifer, well, now you've got pure water. So and now you've right got a down solution. into the groundwater table. That's correct. Right down into the aquifers. Most of course, people, if you have a house there or concrete, it runs off. You most get contaminants do, that might be on the ground. Yep. And that contaminates the water once it eventually does make it in. Right. Most people don't know that all of Long Island's water comes from a sole source aquifer beneath our feet, and what our activity is on the surface defines how clean or dirty that water is. All right, let's be. talk about this debate, because even last year there were a couple of environmental groups, it wasn't unanimous, the majority were with your position, that said, you know what, it's better that we at least are producing solar arrays that uh, help to remove uh, fossil fuel contamination of the of And the we can do that. The issue is only where. You don't have to, you know, saying that you have to cut down the trees to do solar is like saying you have to destroy the environment in order to save it. It's just sort of a, a being, I, I want to look at it, you can't see the forest for the yeah, sun, you know what I mean? Well, now this battle is being uh, waged anew because last year the plan got shot down. It got scrapped by Lipen, never happened. But now you're asking that part of this thousand acres that you want the governor to sign make part of the pine barons be protected from any potential development right some of it is owned by a southampton developer who legally right now has the right to develop a solar farm there he says he's an environmentalist and if the governor takes away his authority to put up a solar farm there he's going to have real problems with that kind of yeah, hinting at but, potentially a legal well that, battle. that would be an, an issue on his part a lot of people have given up their land and been paid full market value for it in order to preserve the land. But in this particular case, no problem. Let's just take it out of the Pine Barrens area, out of the woodlands, and put it in an area that's already been cleared. Same benefit for solar, better I mean, benefit like for water quality. Land swap, give them, have them do it somewhere else? Exactly right. Well, that, I spoke with him. His name is Jerry Rosengarten. Met, and I you're familiar with him, well-known, yep. yep. and a successful businessman. And he said he just recently had the town of Brookhaven come to him and say, okay, here's a piece of land you could have but it's only 20 acres and he has 60 acres and he says I'm going to develop that 60 acres I'm going to take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere by putting up a solar array I'm an environmentalist too and I'm not going to go for a deal that takes away my rights to develop my land environmentalists don't cut down trees Richard the answer is he can build the project the go uh, government will pay them as they have paid other landowners the courts have upheld this at the state and federal level it's perfectly okay to protect the public on something as basic as drinking water as long as you produce just compensation, which he will receive. It's not a one-person issue. It's not even a two-issue uh, uh, issue. We can have both the woodlands protected and the solar. Why would we choose one over the other? It's a, yeah, it's and a I guess point. his last point is that, you know, the deal he has to pr uh, produce that doesn't include this new late uh, adding of 20 acres, and he's not sure LIPO would even sign off on that deal. I'm not sure that he has all of the power purchase agreements he needs to build this project. He can save himself a lot of time and a lot of aggravation and do the right thing if he's an environmentalist by allowing us to have well, both clean Well, he's asked to, water to come on the show, too, uh, and uh, in a couple of weeks we'll hear from him if a decision, whatever it is, with the governor is made or not made, uh, he'll get his chance to weigh in on this issue as well. He may have changed his mind by that. You never know. I'm sure you'll be working <laughs> on that. Richard Amper, Executive Director for the Long Island Pine Barren Society, will be watching what happens in Albany, the clock ticking on this measure. Thanks for having me. You're us. welcome. And when we return, lots of folks decorating both inside and out for the holidays. But did you know there are some potential dangers? We'll have some tips for you on keeping your holidays safe. That's next.